Okay. Hi, I'm Fox. I'm Yago. I'm Couch Guy. You're watching the Two Smart Guys show where every week we talk tech and cool gadget news, mods, hacks. Ways to do fun things. This week we're talking about setting up a wireless bridge and we're going to be using one of these little guys right here from Ubiquity. Why would you want to set up a wireless bridge, you ask? Because they're cool. They're a lot more fun than stringing a thousand miles of cable across town. Well, you just have to think of them as a long-distance Ethernet cable when we're doing it this way. Because it, it truly, that's exactly what it becomes. You know, your way of describing that's probably the best is way to envision what's happening. Yeah, so these, these, um, these will allow you to share your files on your file server with somebody. You can create your own little private network, uh, do a LAN party across the street, or uh, in your case, stream a football game without having to drag a yeah. long Ethernet cable across the football yeah. field. So or setting up garages to, uh, or security cameras. And Yeah. I had a problem where I had uh, a, a high school that had Internet at their baseball fields but didn't have Internet at their football or their soccer fields. And we're talking, it wasn't much. It was 500 yards. But, you know, for them, it would cost them thousands of dollars to have Ethernet strung to both those locations or one of those locations and we bypassed that we plugged in one you know went straight across to a pri it was a private point to point connection and they have no issues between those two points and they were able to use their same login password access keys everything that they would traditionally have yeah so basically what we're going to create is a wireless transparent bridge which means everything on the network will be identical. So we'll take a look at one of these things. Yeah. Uh, we should talk about the cost of these. People think these things cost a ton of money. No, and they don't. Reality, so this is this is one of the, the distance um, you get. This is the nano station here, M5, and this thing costs yeah, what, I, like, eighty-five bucks, hundred bucks. I, I actually, I just bought two of them, and they were seventy-five bucks a piece. Yeah. So it just kind of depends on where you buy them and how fast you need them. Um, you can get them yeah, cheaper if, if you want shipping. <laughs> Shipping and different distributors cost a different amount, but they should be under $100 a piece. And the, these ones will, will get you 5 to 10 miles. Um, if you put a reflector dish on them, they'll go up to 20. There's a Loco model, which is about $50, $50, $60, and they, they will um, go a couple miles. But they're smaller and cheaper. Same thing, just a few differences. The, the further away you get from each other... The, the higher the latency becomes and the lower the strength, which means, you know, your speeds will reduce as you go further away. Right? Pretty much general rule of thumb, yeah. Fair, fair way to assess it. Yeah, I mean, if you've got, if you're shooting through a building or a tree and you don't have, like, line of sight, you'll probably have a worse signal than if you were, you know, five miles apart and, you know, not shooting through those things. Yeah, trees are yeah, the let's put enemies. This way. <laughs> From 500 yards, when I was, you know, we were talking about using these for small applications, not the big ones that Pox uses it for, where we're talking about connecting out buildings and things like that, or even different buildings on the same, you know, office complex. You know, the latency and differences is almost nothing because we were streaming on our football field, you know, use at, we had 60 megs download and 30 megs upload, for, and which was the exact kind of system stream that they had at the school. So it wasn't any significant loss that was detectable. Not, not to be a big ubiquity commercial, but they, they are known for low latency. They try and keep it under two milliseconds in ideal conditions, of course. If you got bad conditions, it'll jump up. But the, and low power, which means uh, we'll do a future episode on running these things off of solar sites. That's how we do most of our stuff at work. And um, they're sim simple to use. They're, they're relatively speaking compared to other systems out there. They're they're, they're easier than others. <laughs> so Absolutely. We're, so we're gonna do a quick little tutorial on how to configure two of these to be a wireless bridge. And then you can just take them anywhere, as is, once they're set up, and just plug them in to an ethernet cable that's plugged into a power injector. So you don't even have to run power to these things, you just run an ethernet cable to them. And as long as you've got power next to where your ethernet ends at, you'll get power to this. And you even got auxiliary power uh, on these on the bottom. They have a secondary port, so you can run another device that needs power over ethernet. That's cool. only on on the uh, 365, the M5, and the M2. The Loco doesn't have a secondary. Yeah, the Locos don't have the secondary because they're cheap. -er. So here's here's the guide on how to set up uh, two of these these bad boys to get you a long Ethernet distance. 
All right, first thing you need to do is plug in one of the wireless bridges and set a static IP on your computer in the same subnet range of dot one dot something like 1.100, anything but 1.20. Then in your web browser, go to 1.20, use the default username UBNT and password of UBNT, then upgrade to the latest firmware. You download this from UBNT.com. The latest firmware will give you better range and better stability. You'll have to log in again. Change your device name so you can know which one's which. One will be your station, one will be your wireless access point. You also need to change the administrator password and the administrator username. You always have to hit change and then at the top apply for all your settings. Log in with your new username and password and we're going to change the air max setting and that's the little ubiquity symbol on the left. We'll set it to medium, that's kind of a good starting point, change and apply. Then we'll go to our wireless tab and we're going to set up our station. So we'll turn on the wireless bridge mode and we will set it down to 10 megahertz of bandwidth. This gives us longer distance and still like up to 40 megs of speed, so it's pretty fast. And turn on WPA2 encryption. That is the fastest hardware accelerated encryption. Uh, other ones will like half your speed, so stick with this one. AES mode. And change your uh, SSID to whatever you want it to be. Just make note of it because you're going to have to do these exact settings on your other wireless bridge. Go to the network tab and turn on DHCP. That way it'll get a new IP address from whatever network you plug it into. And go ahead and change and apply that. Now plug in your other bridge. Do exactly the same process, but you're going to want to change the IP address to like the backup IP address to 1.21. And in the wireless side, you're going to want to change it to access point instead of being the station. Then you're all set and you're ready to go. <laughs> Hooray! All right, so that wasn't too complicated. It'd take you, what, like five minutes to set it up if everything went well? Not yeah, five the... minutes each. I would say do five minutes each. Take your time and get it set up <laughs> properly because if you're hurrying like I did the first time without re remembering some of the details that, you know, Pox had told me over the phone, you'll end up resetting them three or four times yeah. so trying to figure out what you did wrong. If you don't know anything about IP addresses and static IP addresses, that will get you every time. These come with a static IP, a yeah. 192.168.1.20. .1 you'll need to have them be different IPs, so you have to change one of them to 1.21 or something. And you'll also need to yeah. make sure they're not on the same network as everything else, not the same subnet mask as whatever else you're doing or else they might interfere, you might get duplicate IPs. And if you want to be able to well, manage them, you need to put a static IP in your computer in the same subnet. Well, and that's what I kept on having problems with is I kept on not forgetting to change my subnet when I changed the routers, you know, the Ubiquity device, and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't talk to it. And it was suddenly like the light clicked. I'm like, hey, dummy, you just changed the subnet, not the IP address. So there's no way it can even talk to each other. <laughs> so it was like the stupidest mistake in the world. And once I figured it out, I was like, all right, light clicked on. We're good. We're done. So, yeah. So there's there's some there's some tips and tricks um, on these. We'll probably get into them further. Further, there's 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 a there's a bunch of different settings. Um, these can also work as regular 802.11n devices. Um, but if you turn on the Air Max setting, they only work with other ubiquity devices. And you can do cool things like channel shifting so that other devices can't even see them, other than other ubiquities. So you can make it more secure and less open to you know people getting into your and network. What I really thought was neat about it was that even between the two points, you create a secure network there, but as far as your home network knows, they don't even exist. They don't show up. They don't interfere. They don't you know, do any travel between the packets or anything like that so that that way your logins are interfered with. There's no second. It doesn't look like a man in the middle when to your network. So if your network admin is in like looking for interference between the two, you don't see it because it passes all the information across. Yeah, the, the, as long as you have that wireless transparent bridge check, that's what it does, just start across. The, I don't know, there is, there's still issues with, with the device. I mean, it's still a wireless device. You're still gonna run into frequency. Um, yeah, interference. Interference and, uh, you know, going through trees, that's a big thing. They do have a device Absolutely. that goes through the uh, the Yagi, which is basically this big, huge <laughs> chainsaw-looking thing. 
that uh, helps go through trees, but it has a limited um, range. range on yeah. it. Um, and and it's, it's 900 megahertz, so baby monitors, things that run in the 900 megahertz range, wireless phones. So it just depends on where you're at. Like, it may be, a, may be an issue. Yeah. yeah. This does actually come, this device uh, actually comes with a uh, frequency um, viewer. So you can actually see what other frequencies are used, and you can go to like a, a different frequency. Yeah, there's and stuff. A, a, a spectrum an analyzer built into yeah. it uh, called AirView that you launch with. It's a Java utility, and it'll show you all the five gigahertz stuff in the area. So you can look at that and be like, you know what? The the lower channels are noisy, the higher channels are noisy, and by default these automatically pick what's not noisy, but that changes throughout the day. So usually you'd want to lock it down uh, if you, you want to have a steady steady connection, but you'll you might want to look at your your view for a while to determine what might be the best channel to pick. But for short ranges, um, it does pretty good. Um, cool. And uh, usually the frequencies don't affect it short range, uh, it, but it depends on a lot of things. So. Yeah. so that's the basics today. We'll get in more to, into this more um, in future episodes. Please post in the comments below what more do you want to know? If you're, are you guys interested in super long range wireless signals and connectivity and networks? Because um, we've been doing a lot of that lately. We got, we got some knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we do the show every week. Uh, Wednesdays we do it live here on YouTube at uh, 8.30 Mountain Time. And uh, the live finished Spit and Polish show comes out on Mondays. So... Please subscribe to the feed, post your comments below. We want to know what you guys want to see more of. Uh, look at the past shows, twosmartguys.com. What else? Twitter, I'm at Walking Crow. Tommy5C, no, no Twitter. I don't exist. And no Twitter. Someone's <laughs> going to get you know, sent no Twitter. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> at no Twitter. Uh, see you guys next week. Later. Bye. This has been a Two Smart Guys production. 